It's a new week and so a new animal must ascend to the title of Animal of the Week. In today's video we're looking at the Blue Sea Dragon, also known as Glyucus Atlanticus. This amazingly blue creature is a type of sea slug and nudibrong. It's a member of the family Glaculidae that only includes a single genus, Glyucus, that the blue sea dragon is a part of. Within this genus there are five different species, all looking incredibly similar to each other, with the main difference just being size and location. The blue sea dragon is the larger species and the more well known, having been discovered in the 1700s, compared to the more recently discovered North and South Pacific species in just 2014. Blue sea dragons clearly live in the sea, hence the name, but where in the sea do the sea dragons live? Interestingly, these sea slugs live on the surface of the water and float around in the currents. Generally, they live quite far offshore in deeper ocean, but will sometimes venture to shallower coasts and then dive down to the sea floor for various reasons like hunting. Interestingly, they have been found in both tropical and temperate waters, being found in the Baltic Sea, as well as the east coast of America, the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean, Cape of Good Hope, as well as off the east coast of Australia and the waters surrounding New Zealand. Their ranges are obviously much larger, as they venture off into more open ocean, but these areas are where they have been sighted, and so naturally will have an incorrect pattern towards coastal regions, as there are generally more people living on land than in the middle of the ocean to see these guys. Blue sea dragons have a rather peculiar diet. They love highly venomous jellyfish. A favourite is the Portuguese man of war. However, they also feed on the bywind sailor jellyfish as well as blue button jellyfish, depending of course upon where in the world they are. Even more interesting is the reason that they eat such venomous jellyfish. When they eat the jellyfish, they don't completely digest them. They actually save the jellyfish stinging cells called nematocytes and store them in the tips of their serrata, the finger looking appendages, to use use them as self-defense. This is why it's unwise to handle the blue sea dragon, as it can very easily sting you, inflicting the same amount of pain and damage as a Portuguese man of war. Interestingly, these sea slugs are hermaphrodites, meaning they possess both male and female reproductive organs. However, they do not breed asexually like some hermaphrodites do. They will seek out another partner in order to transfer genetic material, and therefore ensure genetic diversity in the population. The male reproductive organ is especially large and hooked in order to avoid potentially getting stung by the other individual's serrata. Once mated, both individuals are able to lay the eggs. This differs from some hermaphrodite sea slugs that will penis fence each other for dominance and the loser becomes the one that has to carry the eggs, which gives them a survival disadvantage. Blue sea dragons are much nicer in their mating practices and share the burden of laying eggs. This will also increase the chances of the eggs surviving. They lay the eggs on strings of around 30 and will wrap them around floating debris or even in carcasses of larger dead marine animals. Perhaps their coolest adaptation is their ability to take a jellyfish's venomous sting and use it for themselves, so I'll delve more into that. As the nematocytes come from the Portuguese man of war, they will sting just like one, which is very bad for any one or thing on the receiving end. They can easily paralyse small fish and other prey, which comes in handy as they have been known to feed upon some species of sea snail. To humans, the symptoms can range from extreme pain to death in the worst cases. If the venom travels into a human's lymph node, it can actually create symptoms mimicking an allergic reaction, causing cardiac distress and the swelling of the larynx, blocking your airways and potentially causing suffocation. If you are old or have pre-existing conditions, the sting can cause shock and and death. However, in most cases, though extremely painful, you're more likely to survive with little more than nausea, vomiting, and a very nasty red mark. Another adaptation of the blue sea dragon is their blue colour and counter shading, with blue on top and silver on the bottom, which means that any birds looking down will see the blue sea, and any fish looking up will see lighter silvery sunlight. But the strange thing is, is that the silver bottom is actually the dorsal region of the sea slug. Due to the location of its gas sac that keeps it buoyant, these slugs actually float upside down. The blue top is actually its belly, and the silver bottom is actually its back. As previously mentioned, these can be eaten by birds or even fish, but the main threat is birds, as they float on the surface of the water. Seagulls and pelicans are particularly good at eating them. 
Another big threat to them is actually getting washed up on shore by currents and tides. Once out of water, their gas sack collapses under pressure, leaving them rather defenseless and helpless to anything that might come across them. As they are small, only about 1-2 to two inches long, they can easily be stepped on by humans at the beach, which might end up actually being more painful for the human. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you'd like to see more from us.